welcome to the demo scene documentary seminar. For the next 45 minutes, we're going to talk about a project called the demo scene documentary. And as Thomas said in the beginning, once again, Ule, the Finnish broadcasting com company, is quite cool with the slides set here. And I'm Arto Silvast, and I'm from Ule, and I'm going to tell what's behind this demo scene documentary project. Why are we doing it, and what do we wish to achieve with it? So, if anyone doesn't understand what I'm speaking, just shout bingo. So, <coughs> this is what I'm talking about. Uh, the whole, whole documentary, or the project, is based on the enabler strategy that was put up, or put out, 2009. And uh, it concentrates on Finnish know-how and aims to power development of Finnish cultures. And I think this is what we're doing right here. The other point is to we want to aim to create new ways of conducting business and operating in the communities. And we aim to create new environments and tools for individuals to express themselves. We also aim to utilize the user-generated development resource to better knowledge of motives behind the media usage. So if we're doing something, we can like crowdsource it or ask the people that what should we do that they would use our media content. And here's a little outline what it actually could mean. It means more power to the people, more openness for ideas and proposals for, from outside Ule, and more listening for the Finnish people, which in my point of view leads to a more relevant content from a public service point of view. And why a documentary? Well, uh, we have, uh, when we started thinking about this, we were thinking about a uh, documentary in a larger sense. Uh, as in the strategy here, we want to power the culture. It sounds very, uh, how can I say, how could I say? Can you describe an adjective for that? No. Uh, like form <laughs> Percy in Finnish? Well, that's what we're trying to do. And we also want to create conversation about the demo scene. And like, like uh, share the thought that people know it's important what the demo scene is about and what demos are about and so on. We also want to create some value in the demo scene and for the demo scene. We're not thinking about this as uh, value for Ule. Of course, it's value for Ule, but not in the sense that uh, we get more viewers or we get po uh, better customers or, or, or more customers or blah, blah, blah. And then we also had have this um, thought about a collective documentary. And in, this comes in life, actually, or did in the Alternative Party 2009, where we actually workshopped the whole script for the documentary. And this is what the content is based on, or uh, how I might say, the, can you the describe script it? Is based yeah, on. Script. <laughs> yeah, but uh, basically it's a list of demos and demo uh, authors that if, if we do a documentary, who should we interview or what demos should we conclude on the documentary? That's the idea. And there were people from Alternative Party that year, all demo sceners who were designing that and they were all a lot of famous demo sceners from all over the world and they really wanted to see that the documentary will turn out great and it will be as accurate as possible. Or yeah, at least the, the, the topics in terms of like people and, 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 and demos and groups would be, would be the uh, important ones. Uh, well, the demo scene documentary, here's a few outlines of the what have we done yet. So it started in 2009. Actually, Kim Viljanen from Alt Party organization sent us email that how could we, how could Ule be a partner of Alternative Party in the year 2009? And then we started planning, planning this stuff, whatever we're going to do. And we ended up with the documentary and the script thing and the workshop. And after that, we hired a crew, which is Thomas and Tommy, <laughs> to work very with the actual content. <laughs> a very large crew, yeah. two people. Two guys. They do magic. That's true. And here's more timelines. The premiere was uh, on Thursday. I'm, I'm sure you all watched it. But, uh, and this booth of, <laughs> booth of Confessions was something we were doing yesterday at Boo. Uh, it's not, what's it called? 
Boozembler. I, 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 I didn't know if, uh, <laughs> it, if it's it okay to say it out loud because this is a family event. And That's true. Blah, blah. But it should be remembered. But it was, it was on the rock uh, <laughs> behind Messukeskus. It was very much fun. But uh, we did uh, shoot about 10 comments about these demos that were on the list that, been, that was made in the alternate party 2009. And some seniors had their chance to give their comment. And next week, we're starting this thing called Material Challenge. And the idea is to get uh, short intros or introductions from seniors to the actual content that we, that we publish. So, so we're, at, uh, we're, we're trying to add up uh, demos to our demo scene documentary. So basically just an opening intro for each of the episodes of the yeah. TV program and hope some famous demo sceners will get their demo work for that and present a very nice, nice intro for each episode. Yeah. And then of course in, in this year's alternative party we're going to show all the seven sequels of the documentary. So we have a premiere there. I'm, ho I'm hoping you're all coming. And after that, I'm sure we can plan new things for 2011. We have some plans at Ule, but uh, as we are in this situation that we are now, we try to be very open and listen to ideas what seniors have and, and so on. So the demo scene documentary goals 2010 for Ule are to create working communications between the demo scene communi community and Ule, and to create possibilities for individual developers, demo groups, artists, or seniors to have their influence on Ulen's content or its development. And of course, to give demos and demo scene more visibility on the media. And 2011 is you tell us. And uh, we want you to get involved. And this is uh, as we have built the ground in the web for the documentary, we have uh, experience that Facebook is the best for sharing content and comments and stuff. And that's about it. This is not what Ule is about anymore. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Thomas, will you continue to give a more glittery picture of the yeah, production? Yeah, I'll be uh, less, less official since I don't work for Wiley, so... And we have technical problems, I guess, or... It's the Mac. <laughs> Which... <laughs> oh, okay. There we go. Thank you. And we still have image, great. Um, okay, um, so a lot of the uh, fan uh, fancy production methodologies and words that uh, Arto explained, um, I'm the person that actually sort of ha has to execute. Um, so my scene alias is right, I've been like in the scene since like 1992, member of Orange and, and the Polem and also one of the folks involved when we started scene.org years and years and years ago. I wasn't that much involved with it after we, we launched it. Uh, but um, uh, my day job for the last eight years, I'm the founder, creative director, and um, editor-in-chief of Pelaya, which is a Finnish video games magazine. And my real name is, is uh, Thomas Puha. And like I said, I'm a long time um, demo scene fan and have, have been involved in the scene. So um, somehow we, we got together and, and tried to make beautiful, beautiful things. So my job on, on the project pretty much is being the screenwriter and, and sort of a, there's a lot of producers, especially when I looked at the credits. Um, but uh, in terms of like actually 
creating the content for the episodes and writing the episodes and, and doing the interviews, all that stuff. That's, that's what I do. Um, a couple of reasons why I think it's important that we do the entire um, documentary is that the demo scene has been around for quite a while and by its nature it's, it's underground, wants to be um, underground, but history is important. It's very, uh, it's very important to preserve it. Sort of the older you get, you will, you will understand that. I, I think like for me the big interest in the project was that I really, there's been some fantastic things that have happened in the demo scene, so I, th I think it's important that uh, an entity like Wiley um, recognizes uh, what what we've achieved. And of course I have a vested personal interest since I'm part of the scene, not so active uh, anymore in the last latter years, but um, it to me like why, why I also wanted to get involved is that I know a lot of the people and, and I want to make sure we uh, do things right. And of course in Finland we, we like to produce a lot of crap on the TV and in the media in general, and which is not so different from other countries in, in, in the world, but like when we actually have done some incredibly cool stuff like the Future Crew guys and, and what, uh, what, well, for example, like CNCD and Fairlight have done and, and, and all, all, you know, lots of people, I mean, why not show it? You know, that cool stuff has been done. And a lot of times that I found out a lot of the creators of the demos don't think it's that important, they just put the product out and that's it. But like I said, it is important, um, recognition is very important. You never know when, when it's a very positive thing for you that some uh, you know, body of work that you have produced uh, is mentioned somewhere, that, that might be very helpful um, down the line. And uh, when we started working on the demo scene uh, documentary project, like what I found interesting is like, um, even in like early 90s, mid, mid 90s, like a lot of a lot of demo scene in America, there wasn't that many groups. There was a lot of people making music, but a lot of a lot of the uh, American demo scene folks are the ones that are like archiving the demos, like like Trickster creating the the Mind Candy DVDs and and all that stuff. Um, and I talked with some of these guys and and like talk with Epic Epic Games who've done Gears of War, Unreal, and and they're like head of tech. Um, and also um, Mark Rain, who runs runs their business, were like super excited to hear that we're doing like stuff on 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 uh, on the demo scene, and especially with about the Future Crew, because they've they've been involved with FC way way back in the day. And now I'm forgetting what was my next slide. Uh, okay, I have some stuff that we haven't shown that that we've shot. Unreal. Yksi ensimmäisistä skripteistä. And this is in Finnish. Tämä oli mun visio, miten se demo voisi mennä. Tämä niin kuin ujutin sitten Samille eli Psiille. Ja tota, tästä se pikkuhiljaa lähti muotoutuu muistaakseni. Voi olla, että oli kilpailivia skriptejäkin. So why it Mutta ainakaan mulle ei ole niitä missään. Easier for us to like create like a really good episode of Future Crew is because they have uh, preserved a lot of the stuff. Like they shot a lot of, you know, they took a lot of photos when they made demos and and all that. So you know, preserve your history. So that is the actual script for the Future Crew's Unreal demo. Like which effects for how long, all all that stuff. And this is of course Samuli Gore of Future Crew, who is perfect synchronization there. Um, so you know, in obviously in 92, 93, it's very different thing. We didn't have Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter or anything, and sort of now everything we do gets documented somewhere. But um, this kind of shows that it's um, you know preserve preserve your history. You never know uh, where it might be used. Se oli sellainen juttu, mikä me haluttiin tuoda PC-demoihin. Tämä Amikalla oli nähty pikkusen, mutta se oli sielläkin silleen... Se oli täysin sitten sitä, että viisi rakennetaan niin kuin jo sen. Hearing your own voice is absolutely horrible. Okay, um... So, this was the, the, the plan uh, when, when I got involved. Basically, after the uh, Alt Party um, seminar, which, which I, wasn't, I wasn't a part of, um, this, so, this sort of timeline and wall was created. And you know what, post-its rock, it's still the best, best way to maintain schedules and everything and just to simply map out ideas. So Arto basically sent me this photo and well, like if you 
if you want to do this, then this is the stuff you need to have in the documentary. So I can't really say that this is a script. It's the basis <laughs> for the script that I then um, had to write. And most of the stuff that is mentioned here at, at the wall is in the, um, in the episodes. We have seven episodes. Um, and this was all, um, like, like you said, like all the people there at, at Alt Party, there was a lot of, um, you know, demos in veterans and so on who dis discussed what, sh what we should include, you know, which demos, which people, who should talk about the demos, and, and then, you know, we tried, they tried to sort of uh, work, it, work it to a timeline. And I cut off the 80s, even though 80s is my favorite era, but um, doesn't really work visually that great. But this was the, this was the starting point. So that turned into seven episodes, and the thing is you could do only so much, obviously. You know, you want to do a lot. I mean, there's, we, we don't basically, we don't cover intros or 4K intros or anything like that. It just, it, this is the start. So we focused on the home front, with, which is Finland. So even though we have a lot of foreign uh, demos that we talk about in the various episodes, we, we still focus on talking. Uh, to Finnish sceners and, and really documenting the, the, the Finnish history, or we're documenting the demo scene history from a Finnish perspective. So uh, going through the episodes, the first, first one is like concentrating roughly on 1990s, so it has Mental Hangover, uh, Silence and Cryonics Hardwired, which, which was a year later, I think, um, some tasty coke. Uh, drink. <coughs> and then 1993, which obviously was Future Crew and Second Reality, and that turned into two-part episode because like one because Wiley wants this to be very sort of out there and cool and new so we try to do YouTube length episodes so below 10 minutes 59 seconds but Future Crew was 17 minutes so it's going to be split into two then around circa 95 sort of when 3D was very um, dominant uh, but we, we sort of got to a bit more stylish 3D so stuff uh, stuff like Dove from Complex, Parallax if Virtual Dream Sumer were demos that people thought that we should include. Then, since the mid 90s were so cool, uh, and there was a lot of interesting uh, stuff going on, then we have another episode which is a bit more about mixing old school style with, with, with the sort of 3D, which CNCD did really well. And of course, Orange really didn't, didn't like using 3D, 3D at all, just, just effects. And then we really we make a long leap into the 2000, um, in the year 2000, well, not, not really, it works better with sound. Um, so then we, we sort of conclude uh, with the 2000 era, which is demos like um, Life Force Debris and, and, and Stargazer, which are all very, very unique and, and, and very different with like something like Stargazer sort of being being uh, a new school demo in the old school mode, lot of lot of effects, like a very good soundtrack, as opposed to something like Life Force, which is uh, quite a bit more um, out there. And yes, I know that's packing ten years into like ten minutes, so well, it wasn't very it wasn't very easy. But uh, like I said, this is a starting point. And then there's one timeless classic episode, the music episode, because like everybody sort of agreed that. Um, Music is a huge part of demos. There are certain people um, like, well, Broadham State or, well, Dune and, and, and York, and, and obviously tons of, other, tons of other people who've made, made great music. So we're concentrating one episode to talk about the, the significance of, of the music in the demos, what makes for a good demo tune, like Yugi talks about how, how he composed Dope, uh, the soundtrack to Dope, and, and that's, that's my... Good buddy, uh, Yolko, where I guess he's crankshaft as, as well. And then the production, um, like Arto said, this was collaborative uh, very much. I mean, I don't think you can get more collaborative than having a bunch of people throwing around ideas and literally sticking them onto a wall and, and trying to figure out what, what should be included. But it's, it's very, very complicated. I'm not going to say we are doing it particularly brilliantly we're trying and with the collaborative process I mean we had all these ideas and that we're really trying really hard to execute but like how we, we would sort of have like a rough outline to an episode and we had an idea that we want you know if you're a demo scene fan you can send us like I don't know through your like webcam or something like you can talk about 
where you first time, you know, you, sh uh, you saw like X14 or Inside or something like that. How did it feel? Where did you see it? Sort of get uh, get the scene, uh, scene folks in in uh, inside the um, episodes. But it's extremely hard to um, sort of do in terms of ed editing the episodes together. But um, we, we sh you shot footage that we're trying to trying to inter integrate. So we're trying to sort of collect a lot of. Uh, pieces of the puzzle that then uh, I'm I'm trying to put together, um, but but it's it's a big in, in, learning. In one perspective, it's very important that we're open for yeah. ideas and stuff like that, and maybe through that we'll get there yeah. in a few years or something. Uh, but I it's important we want you know people to get uh, in involved. But uh, the timeline was, collab was collaborative, and and like putting the episodes together is still it's sort of. Editing and writing by committee doesn't doesn't really work. But all the work I did was based on what people still decided and 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 wanted. So we do want the community to somehow contribute. Like the intros to the episodes is in, is uh, is one way. Uh, maybe getting some music uh, and and hopefully we're able to integrate like people's opinions on demos and 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 stuff. I th I think we, we we really want to. Really want to try try and um, do that. Um, and one sort of pie in the sky vision we had uh, was that once, like all this will be, all the episodes will be distributed on YouTube. So the idea is that once it's there, you could people could somehow remix it to to some extent. I really don't know how, but um, we you know we'll we'll try to figure out. There's a whole lot more smarter people on the project than I am. Thank God. So yes, we're still working on implementing how we can get more people um, in, involved. Uh, I think like it, it's an interesting way of doing things and, and like making demos is, is very collaborative. Um, but but it's, it's difficult. It, it's extremely time consuming. Like all of us have, have like a um, day job and, and, and like it's, it's, it's tough. There's a lot of people that have different opinions and you want, want to include everybody's sort of vision. Uh, but uh, we we need to work on like sort yeah, of especially when you're when you're talking about making the actual content. How could it even be collaborative if you're doing a product, what you yeah. want to uh, like put out or something? But at least in terms of like the the content that is in the episodes is is pretty much completely what was decided at the um, at at Alt Party. I mean that that's about as collaborative as you can get. Like like I said, so the origin of the project is is was was very cool to me like like just getting that one image and okay how do we break this down into episodes status report right here right now um so uh on thursday we showed the future crew episode which concentrated on future crew and uh second reality i think we got eight of the ten guys together which was very cool because they hadn't a lot of them haven't hadn't seen each other in like some like 10 years so that episode uh, was done and we hope to have it out on YouTube and on DemoScenedocumentary.com and Facebook like hopefully by tomorrow. Yeah, I spent the whole day subtitling. <laughs> so um, we, we didn't have time to get the sub subtitles done for for the premiere, but we, we, we obviously when we, when we put the stuff on YouTube, it, it'll be um, subtitled. So basically two episodes done, um, two other ones have been written, the, the two Wait, uh, the Orange CNCD episode has been written. The first episode has been written. So we have something like three that we're still still working on. So there's, you know, every chance to sort of put in put in more stuff um, stuff in there. So that's that's where we are now. And and like Arto said, the whole uh, seven episodes will be uh, released at at Alt Parto, which is at the end of October, if I'm correct. Um, so that's that's where we are. So we're still trying to figure a lot of this stuff stuff out, um, and it's not out yet. Uh, I mean, I forgot to fix that, but uh, it'll be out. Uh, it'll be out by tomorrow. So quickly, you know, every saga has its beginning. So this sort of we look at this as sort of 1.0, that we we do the seven episodes and like then next year, you know, uh, Wiley. You know the the big bosses there. We'll, we will make them look very good to their bosses if if they have any, uh, and they'll just you know throw more money at us so we can do a whole lot more cool cool stuff. So you know th this is a learning process, and hopefully we can do a whole lot more on the scene 
um, in in the future. That 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 really is the plan. I mean, there's tons of cool cool demos, cool people, um, parties, everything. That that I mean, there's just so much stuff that we we would like to cover. Um, and one thing is that we don't at this point we have have Finnish people in in the documentary. So it obviously the, the documentaries are in Finnish. Does doesn't really make sense if they'd be. If we if we'd be speaking English, but in 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 the future, obviously, technology is is the technology that is available to us makes it relatively easy to get uh, people from outside of, of of Finland. There's a lot of people I'd like to get involved, you know, discuss their views on the scene, what they th think about stuff, and so on. And like one of the ideas we had was like doing doing something on where a lot of demo sceners are now. Like uh, I I I get to travel around the world, seeing games, and a lot of the time it's sort of there's always some programmer or somebody who's been involved in the demo scene and you know then off 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 we go. So demo sceners are are everywhere, which is really, really, really cool. Um I don't know if if, if anybody here has played uh, Uncharted on the PlayStation 3, but that company Naughty Dog's co president and like lead tech guy is is Oxbab. Oxbab of Oxygen, French French demo guy, um uh, real real genius. So we are everywhere. Uh, get involved, I guess. Um, demos in doc.com is ironically down <laughs> at this point. Uh, should be up by tomorrow. It's not our fault, but we. It, it's <coughs> the, yeah, no. Uh, we actually, the main side is it, in Posteros, if you know this kind of uh, content publishing system, and it's down for maintenance. But even if some of you hate Facebook, I, I don't know why you would hate it, but that's a very very easy to place to follow what we're doing, and we post a lot of stuff there, um, and, and that, that's a great way to give feedback and and all that um so thanks very much for your time hopefully we you know gave shed you some light on 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 what on what we're doing uh and and hopefully we can get you everybody involved somehow so you can go go to those sites and all that um anything to add gentlemen well no. I, c I can say some words like I'm with Walter Pimi, of course, VC of Trilobit in the demo scene, and I'm involved with the documentary. Basically, started them interviewing me, just asking about my opinions of their of the demos and different aspects. And I think, and I was uh, in the original workshop as well, and I, I was very interested from the beginning. And I hope I'll be a part of the uh, this this documentary in the future as well and, and I promise to give all my sort of knowledge of the current scene because uh, Thomas and Artu are not really that active in the demo scene anymore but they still watch demos and still know what's going on but I can give my sort of view into active demo scene and how's the parties nowadays and and I'm also the curator of the demo wall project so I'm I'm very interested in the archival side of preserving demos and preserving demo scene material as Which well so obviously this whole project is like that yes, that's, that's definitely a big part of it definitely yeah. comes naturally me as well because i it i uh, for me it's a very big shame for the loose anything uh, that's relevant to the demo scene does anybody have any questions ideas do we give him a microphone yeah wait for the microphone all right. Um, I think the the title of the talk here or the documentary I don't know was like demo scene documentary never forget or something like this. Yeah. And to me it sounded a bit like like the demo scene is dead and never <laughs> forget it. You know, it's like in memory of the demo scene. Th this is actually my fault uh, because <laughs> I don't I don't remember where it came from. I think I wrote it somewhere just as it didn't mean anything. Yeah, it was it was, more a, it was a comment in Facebook or something. You know. We were yeah, some it's second reality, and and Thomas said something you never forget. And I actually like, yeah, I wondered why the topic was <laughs> <laughs> never forget. The yeah, demo scene is not dead. As no, long as one people in the world is making demos, the demo yeah. scene is not dead. Yeah, maybe the idea was was that uh, that the stuff we're showing here is is about history, is about future crew, and it came with that, the idea. Yeah, and I mean it was more specific to yeah. And in one sense, of course, uh, never forget means like, let's not forget and let's document what we're doing and let's document what we're doing right now because I'm sure no one really hasn't done, you know, interviewing 
Future Crew or any other groups that did stuff in the 90s? Or because hasn't a lot even uh, done it? Because it kind of made me think like during the, the Real Wild compo where some of the demos were like almost as good uh, as the demos in like 2005. You know, and, and like pretty much five, seven, ten years from now, we'll have like better stuff on the handheld than, yeah. than we have now in the demos that are gonna run today, right? Yeah. So, so it is pretty important to do a documentary like this. But do you think it's 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 for history reasons or education reasons or uh, like no, what's the inspiration for it? Stuff that I I didn't mention actually was that we are open for ideas. We could like you know, we could give airtime to demos in TV or something if if we just. Uh, push it through in the ULE and well, stuff I like that. And we could give more coverage of the demo scene, for example. I'd, I'd like, personally, I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to see demos on ULE's channels that they would get more visibility. But it's not, it's not easy because that's why we have to start from here and get a big community <laughs> behind us and, and maybe then it's possible. But like you said, I mean, preserving like, the histories very very important so it's it's uh, yeah, yeah. Ex exactly exactly so i mean li like i said like we we tend to put a lot of rubbish <laughs> on tv here so like let's 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 do something something cool and i think it's like about time yeah there would have been other it. ways to do things uh, with actually with uh, with uh, not doing a documentary we could have have done few reports from assembly or something but I, I don't think that would have been a good idea uh, maybe maybe a pr as how i see it i i think it's more important to like uh, uh be involved with the scene and listen to the scene and, and do stuff with the sceners uh, in in a more uh look to the future more to, than it's just a glimpse on the tv that you watch it once and maybe once on the web and then it's over so I but think it's more valuable to do it like this, what we're doing now. And there's also like a personal interest. I mean, some of these demos over the years are like incredible. So, of course, you want yeah, to yeah, do yeah, what true. you can to, you know, make people. Um, oh, of course, I mean, we're not kidding ourselves. I mean, first and foremost, this is made for the demo scene. But, but um, I think a lot of people hopefully will, will see it and be interested in it. And Regarding this, actually, that's so my... my, my Bounce back to my question earlier, which was like, is this about you know uh, remembering the demo scene and saying what it was like? Is it is it for history purposes or is it to sort of like educate the the kids who are growing up now and tell them like you know what this assembly event is and what it means and it's it's both. Yeah, I'd say that too. Hopefully, it's easier yeah. to explain what demos are if you understand the historical co context of them. If you understand where they came from and how they developed into the current form, it's much more easier to understand why people are doing them the way they are now. I'd say, at least for me, it's much easier to explain it to somebody, a lay person that doesn't understand anything about demos, is to explain where they came from, and usually people will understand, even if they don't know anything about technology. Really. It's actually a nasty thing. I, I think I wouldn't, I, I, I shouldn't say this, but actually, Tommy. Yeah. What did he say <laughs> about demos? He, he's not into the, the scene. He, he doesn't know anything about demo scene. Scene and the, uh, the guy who edited. Um, yeah, and he was ed like, edits and "Whoa!" Show. So those guys created the screensaver. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, that's but he's he's grown to appreciate what yeah what what guys have done. But that was like one thing that I asked from everybody that we interviewed is like, what sort of what what do, what to explain to me what the demo is, and we got a lot of very different different answers uh, and we, we hope to put all that or we plan to put all those uh, all those answers on onto the uh, documentaries YouTube channel so pretty much everybody who was interviewed was asked like explain what is a dem demo and it's very interesting to hear how how you know different people explain what what the demo is or maybe we can just you know put the raw material on YouTube and then people can remix it then, then you lose the message. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Anybody else? We were such an exhaustively informative session that nobody has anything left to ask. No okay. questions. Okay. Okay. Well, um, that's that's all we had. Um, thanks everybody for joining. Thank you. Thank you.